Good morning, everybody, and welcome. And uh, great day today. You know why? Should I tell you? It's because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, it is a great day. And we welcome all of you this morning to our worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for the love of God is forever. The Lord, the Lord is our strength, strength and, our and our salvation. Christ has broken the power of death. In, in him, him, him is life. And life, Praise the Lord, all you people. Blessed, blessed are you, you Lord. Lord. Blessed, blessed, blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Christ. Blessed are all whose hope is in the Lord. Amen. 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 Please mute yourselves. <clears throat> Let's pray together. We are filled with joy on this day of resurrection, Lord. In a world that is so broken, so filled with suffering and death, you have given us the message of life. Our hearts are so desperately needing the message of change. He is not here. He is risen. We pray that you will be the Lord give us strength to live in light of our faith. And, and not, not in light of the, of the good news of our faith, and, and not, not the bad news of our world. Of our world. Give, us Give us the joy of living from faith and for Christ, and the courage to bring good news to the world around us. We praise you, O oh God, most high. For the love which surrounds us, the community which sustains us, the family which guides us, and the vision that fulfills us. We are forever in your debt and destined to praise your name for time and eternity. Amen.
Okay, please uh, mute yourselves. Leslie's going to pray. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this blessed resurrection day. Thank you that you did send your one and only son into the world who could die such a painful death, but yet you raised him to life on that third day. And we are so thankful that you, through Jesus, have given us life, those who trust in you. And we pray, Lord, that you will be with our um, service today. Father, I pray that it'll soften hearts and break through hearts of stone and make them hearts of flesh, Father. And that those who don't know you today will leave here differently. Father, we pray again for the needs of our church. We continue to pray for Bill, who's recovering since having a pacemaker. Father, we pray that you will bring him to full recovery and help him to just not overdo it. Father, we continue to pray for Bernie, who's recovering from COVID. We pray that you'll continue to heal his body and just um, bring him back to 100% health. We pray for Eugene's sister who is still in ICU, Father, and um, still on the ventilator. Lord, even though she's doing better, we pray that you will just work all of those things out that she's dealing with now uh, according to your will, and we pray that you will continue to heal her fully. Father, be with her and strengthen her and strengthen her emotionally, Father, for the days ahead. Father, I pray that as I continue to pray for my mom, I again I plead with you, asking you in these last days of her that you will take her quickly, Father. It doesn't even look like who she used to be. So I pray and plead that you'll take her. Today would be a great day. We continue to pray for healing for Naomi, Father. We pray that you'll just work out her spine issues and heal her and give her full use of every part of her spine and her neck, Lord. We continue to pray also for Dawn that his eye treatment will continue to go well. We thank you for um, healing and bringing fluid into the one eye. We continue to pray for him. We continue to pray for Naomi's son, Stephen, who's struggling, Father. We thank you that he's supposed to get the help he needs and we pray that you'll just uphold him. Father, we continue to pray for little Charlie whose leukemia has returned. Father, we pray this week as he's had surgery, we pray that you will just um, be with him and as his treatment starts and his body is so strained from the treatment, Father, I pray that you'll just be with him and strengthen him and be with his parents as they watch this. Father, for baby Ella who's still out of her home due to CPS removal, we pray that you will just be with their family and be with her and her pastor's family as she raises, as, as, as they are raising her. Father, we pray for Jillian Ann Holland's grandniece and her husband, Patrick, who's in the Air Force in Iraq. We pray that you will continue to keep Patrick safe and be with Jillian. We continue to pray for Jake and Jamie Highland, those fire victims, Father, who are in the recovery stage physically, emotionally, and mentally, Father. We pray especially for them emotionally um, as they mourn the loss of their two children. Father, we continue to pray for Sonia's families, uh, cousin's family, the Hamlins, those two kids who lost their parents. We pray that you will just be with them and just strengthen their little hearts. Father, as we continue our service today, we pray for our country and all of our leaders that you will just work wisdom in all of them. Help us to fix our eyes on you because only you can fix all the problems that we all have. And Father, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus, the Savior who's raised from the dead as he taught us to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. And, and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, we're going to sing Christ the Rose. Please mute yourselves. <laughs> Waiting on 
So uh, there was a Good Friday service in Bangladesh, and it was packed. Little children sat on the floor in the aisle and across from the front of the church. Rows of people stood in the back, trying to move their necks in order to see the resurrection scene as it was depicted in the Jesus film, weeping and gasps of unbelief could be heard in the shock and anguish that Jesus had been crucified. As the Bangladesh children watched, as their parents also watched, they were feeling the agony of Jesus's pain and the disappointment of the disciples. In that emotional moment, one young boy in the crowded church suddenly cried out, don't be afraid. He gets up again. I saw this movie before. A small boy's encouraging cry gave new hope to the viewers of the film. He is risen is the cry that gives new hope to all. The cry, he is risen, comes from the permanent and eternal nature of faith in Jesus. He is the spiritual anchor for his people throughout all ages, places, and circumstances. The empty tomb signaled a new era in history and consecrates the possibility of new beginnings for anyone who would profess faith in Jesus Christ. Not only does it provide a new beginning, but a new way of living as well. As you read any of the four gospel accounts, one thing is clear. Jesus always lived in anticipation of his resurrection. Everything he did, every miracle he performed, every word he uttered was all done with his resurrection in the backdrop. Therefore, his resurrection from the dead is meant to be the backdrop of everything we as his people do and say also. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Therefore, we too will rise as well. So my question to all of us today, how does our living match with the hope of the resurrection? How does it impact our very existence, not just today, but every day that we live and move and breathe in this pilgrimage that we call life? The stone rolled away from the empty tomb on Easter day. And that is a sign for us. It is indeed God's greatest miracle, one which all three members of the Trinity were directly involved in. We Christians are people of the resurrection, and we should be compelled, could be compelled by that fact. We should be moved by faith to find our greatest joy in the greatest event in the history of mankind. Let me repeat that. Jesus's resurrection from the dead is God's greatest event 
in the history of mankind. It's not simply because a man, though dead, uh, was raised again, because if you remember, Jesus did that with Lazarus, and Lazarus' death had no redempted value to it. No, what is significant about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is that this was the way that God used to declare mankind, as well as declaring to all of hell and hell's dominions that death no longer has the final say concerning our life. And that declaration reverberates throughout all the ages. I'm going to read the first eight verses of Luke 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Don't forget what I told you. When it says the Lord Jesus, that's like saying Yahweh Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And then it was as if a cloud had been lifted they remembered his words. You see, Jesus is the resurrection and he is the life. The resurrection is our assurance that through Jesus Christ, we can find joy and peace in this life and the hope of eternal life in the future that will be forever lived in the presence of God forever. For those who are in Christ Jesus, the fear of the grave has been forever silenced. Because of Jesus, our souls and eventually our bodies will live eternally with Jesus. That is the everlasting hope that we gather together to celebrate even today. So my question to all of us on this fine Easter Sunday is, what matters most to you in your life? Is it newer cars, bigger houses, nicer clothing, more luxurious vacations? You see, what matters most to us will direct everything we do. It will direct the way we spend our time, it will direct the way we spend our money and who we spend our time and money with. Easter challenges every believer in Jesus to reflect upon the ways in which we live out our faith and the way we may live out our faith before a world that needs to know Jesus. These possibilities can be shared in our homes, in our wake workplace, in our schools, even in our times of worship. The world does not need a bunch of cloistered people whose only response to the questions people have about life and death is, well, you know, it's somewhere in the Bible, you just have to look for it. No, people want to be shown where to look for it, but more than that, they want to be shown how we live it out in our own lives. Do you live as if the resurrection of Jesus is the greatest event in the history of your life?
can people see the light of the new life in Christ written across your face? I love what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 3.18. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image. You get that? We're all being transformed corporately into the same image, the image of Jesus, from one degree of glory to another. And then he says, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Often I've had opportunities to meet with couples that I married some even over 30 years ago. I often search their faces for the spark of innocence and hope that they had so very long ago. Sometimes I notice, even after so many years, through so many difficulties and hardships, that the spark still remains, while more often than not, that spark has died out. It's been quenched, sapped of all joy. In a way, that is reflected in the way the church has changed over the past 2,000 years. We are men. transformed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm afraid that for many of us, sorry about that. I'm afraid that for many of us, uh, what the world sees written across our faces is the grief of defeat. The same kind of look that was first experienced on that first Good Friday. What people need now more than anything is a reason to find that because of Jesus's resurrection, we are people of a living hope. The reality of the resurrection is meant to show that we are more than just casual Sunday spectators watching from afar. The resurrection is meant to place a center ring in the heart of the game. We are not to live as victims, but as victors, because we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. After all, life's greatest enemy, <clears throat> death, has been destroyed forever for those who are in Christ Jesus. Jesus is not going to someday win the battle. He has already won it. So live your life in the wake of his victory. A school teacher was assigned to visit children in a large city hospital. She received a routine call requesting that she visit a particular child. Excuse me. The teacher took the boy's name and room number and was told by um, the teacher at the other end of the line, we're studying nouns and adverbs in class now. I'd be grateful if you could help him with his homework so he doesn't fall too far behind the others. It wasn't until the visiting teacher got outside the boy's room that she realized that this was located in the hospital's burn unit. No one had prepared her to find a young boy horribly burned and in great pain. The teacher felt that she couldn't just turn around and walk out, although she wanted to. And she stammered awkwardly. I, I, I'm, I'm the hospital teacher and, and, and your teacher sent me to help you with nouns and adverbs. The boy was in so much pain that he barely responded. The young teacher stumbled through the English lesson, ashamed at putting him through such a senseless exercise. 
The next morning, a nurse on the burn unit asked her, what did you say to that boy? Before the teacher could finish her outburst of apologies, the nurse interrupted her. You don't understand. We've been worried about him. But ever since you were here yesterday, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back. He's responding to treatment. It's as if he decided to live. The boy later explained that he had completely given up hope until he saw the teacher. It all changed when he came to a simple realization. With joyful tears, the boy said, that they would send a teacher to work on nouns and adverbs with someone who was dying, they would never do that, would they? This wonderful story invites us to celebrate the gift of life, even when it all seems that things are falling apart around us, that people are in pain and that brokenness is everywhere. It shows us that on the other side of pain, there is resurrection. It reminds us of what is possible whenever the resurrection directs the hope that we live out. People throughout the world need signs of hope that make life worth living. They need to see that hope is alive in us. They need to see it in us. They need to see the reality of Jesus's last words before his ascension, when he promised, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. They need to see that what we have, the assurance we have, is no pie in the sky assurance. Rather, it is something that has been promised and it is a reality to all who are in Jesus Christ. That is the promise we receive on Easter day. We can have hope because we are living in the age of resurrection. A child once asked her mother, where is God? Her mother answered, God is everywhere. And the, the child cried out, but I want God to be somewhere. We all do, don't we? We want God to be here with us now, with us forever. This is, I think, the greatest significance of our Easter celebration. For Easter is the promise that we receive Jesus into our lives and he is with us even now. The resurrection story is the foundation of our hope that Christ lives in eternity and that we will live with him in eternity someday as well. We should never underestimate the strength and the hope that the presence of the resurrected savior brings into our lives. A certain man whose hobby was growing roses, he used to work tirelessly in his garden every day. And while he worked, he whistled. And not only did he whistle, he whistled loudly to his neighbors. His whistling was way too loud for their comfort. One day a neighbor went to him and asked him, why are you always whistling so loudly? The man then took the neighbor into his home to meet his wife. The woman was not only an invalid, but she was completely blind as well. The man was whistling, not for his own benefit, but rather for the benefit of his blind wife. He wanted her to know that he was always near and that she was never alone. That story is a wonderful illustration of the significance of Easter day. The affirmation that Christ is risen proclaims Emmanuel, name of our church, Emmanuel, right? God is with us. He really is with us. It reminds us that there is something stable, something permanent, 
something certain in a world that is seems to be defeated by sin and misery. The empty tomb is our assurance that God stands in and behind our world and that God is there to strengthen and uphold anyone that would put their hope in Jesus. And you know what? He sustains us through the good times and he's also there to sustain us through the bad. The truth of the matter is that God in his great love and concern for us no longer requires signs or miracles for proof since the greatest sign is in the fact that Jesus destroyed life's greatest taskmaster, death. We are meant to live in the hope that because Jesus lives, we too live. The greatest sign of God's presence is done through ordinary events, through ordinary lives. Consider, maybe there's been times where you've remained at the side of someone going through times of pain, perhaps even through times of death these signs that God is working through you and me in extraordinary ways is the way that he uses to touch people's lives. As he does, people should be able to sense the presence of hope within us, the victory over sin and death that Jesus has won on our behalf. Someday, we will all come face to face with the grave. And the question needs to be answered, even now, is will you be accompanied by Jesus on that day? Or are you going to stand in your own strength, in your own power? For you see, without Jesus, without the resurrection, then you will be doomed to be living as a Good Friday person. We've all known dark moments, disappointments, and hardship. But the good news is Easter shows us that we are able to celebrate God's greatest miracle. We can live in the assurance of power that is beyond ourselves. We need Easter so that we may have hope for what seems to be a seemingly hopeless future. Because in the end, we will all face death. Will we do so alone or will we do so accompanied by Jesus? Fanny Crosby was known as the queen of gospel songwriters. She wrote more than 8,000 hymns and gospel songs, which more than 100 million copies were printed. She's also known for her teaching as well as her rescue mission work. By the end of the 19th century, she was a household name. Some of her best known hymns include, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Tenderly Calling, Praise Him, Praise Him, Rescue the Perishing, and To God Be the Glory. Since many publishers were hesitant to include so many hymns by any one person in their hymnals, Crosby had to use 200 different pseudonyms during her career. But at six weeks old, Crosby, Crosby caught a cold and developed inflammation of the eyes. A mustard paste was applied to try to treat the discharge. According to Crosby, this procedure damaged her optic nerves and actually blinded her. But modern physicians think her blindness were more like congenital 
and given her age, may simply not have been noticed by her parents. In April 1825, she was examined by a surgeon who concluded that her condition was inoperable and that her blindness was permanent. So at the age of eight, she wrote her first poem, which described her condition. She later stated, it seemed intended now, I really listened to this because it says so much. It seemed intended by the blessed providence of God that I shall be blind all my life. And I thank him for the dispensation. If perfect earthly sight were offered me tomorrow, I would not accept it. I might not have sung hymns to the praise of God if I had been distracted by the beautiful and interesting things about me. She also once said, when I get to heaven, the first face that I shall ever have glad in my sight will be that of my savior Jesus. According to the biographer Annie Wills, had it not been for her affliction, she might not have had so good an education or have had such great influence and certainly not so fine a memory. And he is alive. He is alive. He is alive. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. He is living in you. He lives in me. And as long as he is living in you, you have hope. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't pack up. Don't back down. Watch the devil square in the eyes and shout, he's alive. And I have his hope living in me. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen today. My prayer for you this glorious Easter morning is that you take this message with you and you live with it every day of your life as Jesus lives in you. May God bless you all this Easter Sunday as well as all the days that he gives to you. He has risen. He has risen. Yeah, I know you're saying it. He is risen indeed. Now go out and live like it. Let's pray. On this day, oh God, we lift our heads and shout the good news that your son Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. In these moments, may we come to know in our hearts, as well as our minds, that Jesus lives now and forevermore. And let us live in the confidence that because he lives, we also will live. We ask this in the name of the one true resurrected Savior, Jesus our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing together now, Christ the Lord is risen today. Please keep yourself muted.
May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, our great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us all that is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. There is no coffee hour today, so go in peace. Go in the peace of the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Happy Easter everybody. Happy Easter, everybody.